Hello and welcome to a review of Generation Toy Op X, aka IDW Optimus Prime. And will you look at that? Basically a completely clean truck mode. Only really thing sticking out is the bits of the feet that they form. And I feel like they could have been slid together to make that a bit more coherent, but even then it's barely noticeable. Yep. <laughs> I can't see why this can't happen more often. His gun is also stored right in the back of a cab. And, okay, that is a bit noticeable of a breakup between those two silver panels. But it is in there pretty well and isn't noticeable from most angles, which I can let it slide. But while the back is clean, it's not exactly accurate to how you'd expect the back of a real truck to look. Oh, so they give you this parts forming piece, which adds wheel wells and a trailer hitch. I mean, it does fill it out, and it's not like it looks worse without it. Its main purpose is to connect MP10's trailer. I feel like if they did more with it, I'd be more accepting, but uh, this thing's going to go right back in the box. Man, I was really preparing to praise the hell of the back of this truck mode. Really sick at the Hasbro and how lazy they get. But uh, my feelings are becoming a lot more mixed as I record these uh, voices. But the front of the truck looks superb. Proportionally perfect. Nice size of the grill. You can tell where all the headlights are. Mm. And also, this is a lot fresher take on Optimus. I'm liking everything I'm seeing here. And it really helps that this paint is gorgeous silver. Though I wish the headlights were picked out in something different. But I can let it slide. I'm satisfied with this. But getting back to issues... There's just these holes here, interrupted by hinges. Could they not have, like, covered that up with a gas tank or anything? It's getting really hard to call this a good truck mode. Certainly better than Earthrise, at least. Does lead me to wonder, what's worse? A gas tank with integration? Or no attempt at a gas tank? Actually, now that I'm saying that, I'd rather just be no gas tank and more proper uh, filled-out cab. Plus, those sections are painted this gunmetal gray, so there's a little bit of illusion there. So I'd be willing to call this truck mode fairly good. Scale comparison. Masterpiece exhaust, which is representative of most of the car bots from MP. And next to it, it looks too large. I go mainly based off of door sizes. I'm not a super sickler for scale. But yeah, this does irk me. <laughs> Same pretty much goes with MPM scale. <sighs> next to an old deluxe, we are certainly going in the right direction, though. But with a modern one... I think that's the, that's the ticket. That's where this thing fits. And then, uh... Okay, I guess the DeLorean's supposed to be a pretty small car, but I don't really know. This also looks fine to me. Eh. Mm. Oh my god, that transformation was so fun to animate. All those bars moving around. Very much felt like the movies, and I love how it looks to animate. It's also in hand, it is pretty complex, but it also feels satisfying to do when you get everything all complete. There's a clear order of operations, and I never really felt lost. So, mm, 10 out of 10 transformation right there. And yep, this robot mode's basically perfect. The back of the truck was pretty skinny. And just look at the amount of shin mass that has come out of just that transformation. So the engineering for this is not impossible, because in fact, this was pretty similar to how SS38 has done it. I also just, in general, like how these wheels were incorporated. 
covered up on the side like the original cartoon, but sticking out of the back because, you know, it's a Transformer. That's, you know, having vehicle parts is their thing. They shouldn't be ashamed of them, Bumblebee Movie Optimus. And can I get a smack in Back Lives Matter, because this back is smooth as fuck. Super satisfying to put together with a lot of clever engineering. And you can still recognize the vehicle parts that these came from. I especially like how the bumper becomes a seamless part of the hip skirting, and you can see a glimpse of the front wheels inside the torso. Mmm. That made the complexity in the transformation feel well earned. Gimmicks wise, the chest houses a laser for his matrix. And this makes so much sense. He's able to shoot out a blast from the matrix without completely exposing it to damage. Mmm, have I gotten it through to your heads that this is my favorite design of Optimus yet? Speaking of Matrix, all of the chest opens up. Finally, a compartment so secure and protected that it's worthy of holding such a supposedly important artifact. This makes too much sense to me. The Matrix also comes out. And like many before it, it's way too small. He's not going to be able to get his fingers in the handles. I get that it has to fit in the chest, but it still kind of irks me that we've never gotten a Matrix that actually scales with a figure that it comes with. Now, here's something I haven't seen other reviewers talk about. When you have the shoulders tabbed together properly, they have some arm-removing functions. Being careful with it, you can get some nice separation going on that looks pretty cool. But it's also able to go out farther for articulation range. Unfortunately, the tab, the only tab, doesn't like staying in. And the reason why people don't talk about it is, a lot of the time, they don't even seem to realize that it's supposed to peg together and do this. So, that's certainly an issue. This should have been able to peg together better. And I think uh, they'd have to go back to the drawing board on how to get it to do that. But it is a cool idea. Definitely reminds me of a lot of the armor-moving gimmicks that some gum Gundam kits have. So, good idea, bad execution. I bring this up because nobody talks about it, and I feel like a lot of people should know about it. Because something like this, where the transformation is also incorporated into it, I'd love to see that on some more high-end figures. Because this is really is cool, and I don't want it to be discouraged. But the worst thing, though, is that on my particular copy, the arms don't like holding themselves up when these things aren't all tabbed together. Which does make animating him a bit frustrating. Lastly, gimmicks-wise... Light up eyes, activated by a switch on the back of the head. Batteries come pre-installed. I love this. This makes the figure so much more expressive. Though the lighting seems to leak through the helmet a bit. Either way, I'm glad I could finally animate blinking. Articulation is pretty standard. But with the three shoulder joints, moving the arm up is pretty satisfying. While the hands are pretty standard, I feel like a figure of this size should be able to have individually articulated fingers. Articulation is certainly standard, and most of the joints are good or fixable if you have some patience. But the feet... Uh, the joints in the feet never really want to hold him up, and that's another point that goes against him for animation. On a shelf, he does fine standing. Uh, having to constantly adjust the pose or just trying to do something subtle, he does not like it. Otherwise, though, the posing is fine. Good enough for a few poses. 
He's good enough to kneel even without the golden ratio. And this is the, uh... Oh. Uh, I guess suppose he doesn't come yet. Uh, time for accessories. He's got his gun. It's his classic blaster with some new edits done to it. I'm kind of iffy on it, though, because not a whole lot of it makes sense. This tube on the back is the end of a scope, or at least that's what I'm getting with that clear part in there. Leaving me to assume this giant front things is the, under, uh, is the other end of it. And that just doesn't make sense. The scope would should be to provide provision, and this looks something more akin to a, say, grenade launcher. And then there's also an iron sight on the end of the barrel. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't feel like it quite matches with the wretch of the rest of this design, which has felt very real robot to me. Adding to that is an underslung minigun. Okay, so I get that the ion part of the ion blaster shoots energy pellets, and as such would just need a small battery, just quickly slapped in there, could go probably a long time without charging. Minigun, though, you'd think that would take real ammo. There's not exactly a designed specific thing on this which shows where ammo could be. So... Yeah, I'm a bit disappointed with this gun, and I think it's more intrinsically due to just how the design is. Can't really f fault G-Creation for accurately recreating a figure. And he holds it. Barely. Uh, the tab does not stay like staying in. Most of the time he's holding it in the pose shots, it's because of pure finger strength. Huh? Oh, posing. Uh, he can he can do this this thing, this pose, that pose, whatever this one is, whatever that running joke was. Uh, pff, uh, pointing and shooting. If I talk into my arm like this, people will think I'm some kind of sci-fi thing doing a communication. R right. We'll take the fight to them. You're no. That, that's the wrong, the wrong Optimus. Um, okay. And then the parts forming part from the vehicle mode does absolutely nothing. Okay, I would have been able to forgive it if, like, hey, maybe it clips onto the arm and becomes a shield. No, just sits there. Because they didn't want to fucking just slap a, a tr some trailer hitch detail onto the back of the truck. <sighs> Size comparisons. Power of the Prime's leader, Optimus. So he's a head taller than old leader. Pretty good for his price, as he's a bit more than a modern leader. At least the version that I got. And POTP... You were my pr you were my MP scale G1 styled Optimus, but I like how this thing works and does better, honestly. Modern Deluxe showing how Optimus would look next to an actual car size transformer. And I don't know why people hate this. It feels appropriate for Optimus. He's a truck, he's tall, cars, not that big vehicles. And it's not like this is even all that far off from Sunbow. He was a pretty tall Autobot. And Gigawatt. God, I hope that fly-in shot was worth it because a flight stand peg broke off in his butt port and now I'm never going to be able to put him on a flight stand again. This <sighs> And the figure that I'm probably going to have him standing next to at all times, NPM VW Bumblebee. I don't think these guys are too far apart in aesthetics-wise, to be honest. In fact, for the reboot universe or whatever they're doing next, I wouldn't entirely mind seeing an adaptation of this design on the big screen. I feel like it would do the best to please most fans, both from the Bave, both Baveverse fans and G1 fans, because it has the actual complexity and it keeps in mind of the actual vehicle mode parts in the robot mode. 
and it functions like how you'd expect a real giant robot to function. Overall, I think this figure is well worth the price. It has its issues design-wise and joint tolerance-wise, and the gun. Uh, but otherwise, I think this is a perfectly good representation of Optimus, and a pretty fun toy. Maybe it's not the highest of high-end collectible Transformers, but it's definitely worth the pickup, just to fiddle with if you want. I'll probably not use this for animation again, but I can't exactly say that you're going to be disappointed if you get this. Anyways, I've been Nexus Eight Eight Four Six Productions, and until next time, transform and roll out. <laughs>